What is going on, Eye of Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're gonna do something special. Today we're going to actually break down carbs, fats, and protein. I wanna actually dive deeper into each of these so that you guys know what they are, what they actually represent, because these are buzzwords in the fitness industry, but people don't really truly know what the actual extent of all of these macronutrients are. And to further equip yourself with the knowledge and understanding of what you need to know when it comes to these macronutrients and how important they can be for you, I wanted to go ahead and help you understand. I'm definitely gonna go ahead and break it down in this video. Stay tuned. Hey. Okay, all right, Santa. <laughs> Don't let him do that, cause then one arm is gonna be one arm's gonna be short. One arm's gonna be shorter than the other. You can't let him do that. You can't. Oh, hey, look, the Eye of Warriors are here. What's going on, guys? Hey, I know there's an important video topic that I, that I'm talking about right now. It's about protein, carbs, and fats. Really good video, super informative. But before you go, we we're just completing these sweaters. As a matter of fact, I'm putting them right here. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Go down on the shelf right below this video and you can click any of those sweaters that you like whichever one touches your heart and, and then enjoy your holiday season with one of these amazing fledge fitness sweaters i mean it's an intermittent fasting ugly sweater what are you waiting for pick one of these can't get any better than that happy holidays guys thank you for everything thank you for the support for this year i hope you guys get together with your families and enjoy the holidays until next time Santa I, Santa, I told you he can't do that. He cannot do that with the sweater. He, you people gonna start walking around like this? This is what you want. You can't have that. Come on, let's fix that. Come on, let me give, give me the give me the, the scissors. Now, the first thing that we're going to talk about in the macronutrient spectrum is carbohydrates. What do carbohydrates entail? Carbohydrates is actually the quick burst energy for your body. Your body loves to use carbohydrates before it uses any other macronutrients or any other source of energy. If there's any type of explosion in terms of your cardiovascular or fitness or movement, if there's an explosion in movement, your body is going to tend to use stored carbohydrates that are stored in the form of glucose. Now, the moment you consume some carbohydrates, they instantly turn into glucose. There are other carbohydrates that do not digest at all or transform or morph into glucose. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. But right now, what we're focusing on is what happens when you consume carbohydrates that do transform or do change into glucose in the body. The body instantly notices that you have consumed glucose. And what it does is it secretes insulin. It uses this to grab onto the glucose put it into the bloodstream and move it across the body to supply the body with energy. Now, what happens when you have too much glucose where your body's not using that energy? You probably think it gets stored as fat. You're kind of right, but also kind of wrong because there's one more step before your body stores glucose as fat. It actually stores it as glycogen. Now, glycogen gets stored within the muscle and also the liver. And within the muscle itself, it's a smart tactic for your body to store glycogen there because it's quick use. So your muscle can actually pull from the glycogen immediately for whichever independent joints are being utilized or all the muscle tissues around that area that's being utilized for any type of extraneous activity or what have you. If you're utilizing that muscle, the quick energy of the glycogen can be supplied right away. Your brain likes to use glycogen, but it can use another source of energy. What's that other source? The most abundant source in your body, triglycerides. Triglycerides are stored in each of your individual fat cells, thus it is your body fat. So your body fat is the most abundant energy that your body has. Now your body cannot strictly just use body fat and triglycerides just like that. It actually starts to turn the body fat into ketone bodies. These ketone bodies, your brain can actually use and substitute for glucose and use it as energy. But here's the only caveat. Your body can use about 70% of these ketone bodies 
for a certain amount of time. So it actually prefers glucose and can switch over if you do not end a fast, for example, for more than 48 or 72 hours of just continuous fasting. Your body will start to do some switches between breaking down amino acids to utilize as glucose and also utilizing ketone body. So if you wanna protect your amino acids as much as possible, which is the building blocks for protein, if you want to spare as much protein as possible, you wanna make sure that you're not going into 72 plus hours of fasting. So yes, your body's favorite source of energy is glucose, which comes from carbohydrates. Now keep in mind, all macronutrients carry energy, but your body's favorite source is always going to be glucose. And of course, you can try to get your body to be fat adapted by reducing the amount of glucose that it uses and making it more comfortable with using body fat, but it'll still use glucose as its primary source for quick energy. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are carbohydrates that when they go into your body, they don't get digested at all, and that's called fiber. Now, they're soluble and insoluble fiber, and soluble fiber goes down, it absorbs the water in your body, and turns into this very, very hard gel that helps your digestive tract, because although it's not digested, it still goes through the digestive tract, and that helps push through any kind of digestion blockage or anything of that nature. So it helps your gut a lot to consume fiber and insoluble fiber just goes down as is but still goes through that digestive tract and because it's so thick and strong it actually also helps by helping you push things that are being blocked through your digestive system and this in turn improves your gut and also improves even your heart health so if you're doing a ketogenic diet for example and you are taking in something that contains fiber you literally can eliminate or minus the amount of grams of the fiber within the carbohydrate gram number itself for whatever item that you're about to eat because it does not, I repeat, does not actually get turned into glucose. It just goes straight into your digestive system without being digested. Now let's move on to the next one, which is dietary fats. Now, what's the purpose of dietary fats? When you're doing a ketogenic diet, this is literally the macronutrient that you're consuming the most of. It's a high fat, low carbohydrate diet to keep you in that ketogenic state. So dietary fats actually help do certain things. It helps protect organs and helps keep the body warm. Now there are four types of dietary fats. There are saturated fats, trans fats, monounsaturated fats, and polyunsaturated fats. For the first two, which is saturated and trans fat, the scientific literature states that this helps increase LDL cholesterol. And LDL cholesterol is considered the bad cholesterol. But interestingly enough, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats actually help reduce LDL cholesterol. And just as a rule of thumb for you to know which is which without having to check and see what it is, whatever is solid in room temperature can be saturated or trans fat. So that could be something like butter, for example. Of course, if you throw butter on a pan, it'll turn into a liquid, but in room temperature, butter is a solid. Whatever is a liquid, even within room temperature, that tends to be monounsaturated or polyunsaturated fats. And that could be something like olive oil or all of the other vegetable oils. Those are mono and polyunsaturated fats. Also, fats can be the most satiating of the three macronutrients as it carries nine calories per gram of dietary fats, more than protein and carbohydrates. So it's definitely a really good tool for you to get in more calories than normal if you're struggling with getting calories within your eating window when doing intermittent fasting, for example. Now let's go ahead and get into my favorite macronutrient, which is proteins. And the reason proteins is my favorite is because there are so many things that protein does in your body. It's so versatile. It acts as a messenger, taking information from certain nuclei, bringing it to other cells, moving to different parts of your body, transporting things from one part of your body to the other. It also acts as an antibody, fighting bacteria that it finds within your body, breaking it up, moving it out of your system. It also creates structure within your tissue and organs. It's really, really versatile 
as a macronutrient. Not only that, it is very complex and powerful that it is highly thermogenic, which means that it takes more calories to break down protein when you're eating it. It takes up to 30% of the calories when you're actually eating it. So for example, if you have 100 calories of protein and you eat 100 calories of protein, it will take 30 of those calories to actually break down the protein itself, making your net energy balance after consuming 100 calories of protein actually leaving your body with just 70 calorie net energy balance as opposed to 100 calories. And this is because of the thermic effect of food, but especially the thermic effect of protein. Now, just to let you know, there are 20 amino acids that are all interlocked and chained together. That interlocking of amino acids is what consists of protein. Protein is the umbrella term of all of those interlocking amino acids, and they can interlock and mix and match for certain elements to build muscle tissue, of course, to build bone structure for skin, for blood, all of these different things. But of the amino acids, there are only nine that are essential, which means your body in and of itself does not create it and your body needs it. You can get all nine from just eating normal foods, which is why I really don't like BCAAs because they're a redundant supplement. If you're eating food, those three amino acids that you get from BCAAs, you can get them from the food. If you're taking protein powder, you can get nine essential amino acids instead of just the three amino acids that come with branch chain amino acids. That's why I tend to not like branch chain amino acids as it rubs me the wrong way as just simply a marketing tool to get people to buy more supplements. But the list goes on and on in terms of what proteins can do. It can store nutrients. It can help your pH balance, your fluid balance with the water retention. It's so versatile and so thermogenic where I can't help but have this be my favorite of the three macronutrients. Now, hopefully I gave you guys a better insight on these macronutrients than just having them be these buzzwords that you keep hearing in the fitness industry and not truly understanding what they actually do in your body. And of course, as always, I wanna thank my patrons for my Patreon and I'm gonna go ahead and put their names right up here. And of course, as always, guys, I'll see you on Wednesday for another FAQ.